Okay, I decided to break this into two videos again because it was getting a little long. So in the second one, I'll do kind of more of the um, finding the formula rather than the graphing. So here we're going to get, um, again, what I call vertex form. Some books call this one standard form, and then the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c general form. For me, I'm used to this being standard form and this being vertex form. Um, and some books call it that as well. So I'm going to stick to that, but the directions, um, I think they were pretty good about putting this in the directions when this is what they're looking for. So hopefully that doesn't cause confusion. Um, anyhow, so this is vertex form, which is like exactly what we were just doing, right? Um, so all of this stuff that I'm calling, um, you know, left and up in this case is now going to be an H and a K. And that's actually our vertex, which it totally was. Notice here, our vertex went left, so that would have been negative 4 and up 5. That is exactly where that point is from the last video. Um, and so when we're in this form, uh, much the same way as we can read the slope and the intercept in y equals mx plus b, in this one it gives us our vertex and our stretch. Um, one thing to be careful of, notice here this is showing as a plus 4, right? But when we graph that, it goes left. So we just have to be careful when it, when we're asked what's what's the vertex that we it's the opposite of what the sign shows and that's because there's that it's reverse um, in terms of the direction and there's this minus in the formula that's making it show backwards. So with that, a um, couple other features. So a that's that stretch factor when it's greater than zero. Um, the parabola opens up and we saw that when we're graphing and then we're also going to say now the vertex is going to make a minimum so the parabola will have a minimum value if a is less than zero that's where we have a negative and we saw the reflection um, then that means the parabola opens down and we would have a maximum value so as we get into application problems um, that vertex is a place where something is minimized or maximized and often a place of interest and then lastly there's something called the axis of symmetry and this is the line that if I folded my paper over, the parabola would sit right on top of itself. This is super important. You gotta be really um, aware of how you enter the answer on this. You're gonna look at this and here you would say the axis of symmetry is one. Um, one is not an equation of, an, of, a, of a line. X equals one is the equation of the line. So um, you'll see the answer entry, you'll ask for the axis of symmetry, you'll type one, and then get really pissed off that's not taking the answer, and it's because it's x equals 1. It wants the equation, not just a random 1. 1 isn't an actual equation. Um, and then occasionally, I think on a couple of the problems, it might be in the next section, um, if it has x equals and then the box, then you only need to type the 1. But if it's just a plain box, it's looking for an equation. Hopefully everyone watches that. So for these first couple, we are going from here is the graph. Now go backwards and try to find the equation. So we can look here and figure out our vertex. So our vertex in this one is 2, negative 1. So that's going to be our h and our k. And then the other thing that we need is our stretch. And this one, it looks like it goes over 1. And my next clean point is there at 3. It's opening up, so it's going to be positive. Uh, so as y equals, this would be y equals 3, and then x minus 2, and there's that minus 2 went right. That's our quantity squared, and then it went down 1, so minus 1. Same thing here. Let's find our vertex first. Uh, looks like it's at negative 3, negative 1 again, and so our stretch is, it's still over one, but this time it's down one, so that means we're gonna have a negative in front because we have that reflection. So y equals negative, and then parentheses, uh, x minus negative three, so I'm gonna write that as plus three, because there's our, our shift to the left, quantity squared, and minus one again. Okay, so. Number six goes rewrite the quadratic function in standard form, which is the one that I'm calling vertex form, but notice the answer box is set up for vertex form, and then give the vertex. Okay, so if you remember that completing the square that um, you probably didn't like in the last section, here's one of the couple of places we're going to need that again. 
and this time it's this really kind of tricky, funky, weird completing the square that you won't like. But if you get where you can do it, it's um, it's actually easier than the thing I'll show you in the next section where we do um, vertex is negative b over 2a. So this is kind of more of the completing the square section. And then uh, the next section, 5.4, that's going to kind of flow more with the quadratic formula. So for here, we have this, and I'm trying to get this to like this a, and remember we had x minus h squared plus k deal, and I need to have this completed square. And right now I don't have that. And so if I can complete this square in those two terms, I can write it in this form, and that's going to let me write it in vertex form. Let me show you what that would all look like. Um, this is one of those things that when I do it in class, people are like, uh, that's witchcraft, so this is, it really isn't witchcraft, but maybe it feels a little bit like witchcraft. Um, so if you remember in completing the square, if this equaled zero, we would have moved this four over. We would go half as six is three, three squared makes nine, right? So we would go plus nine. Over here I would have equals negative four, and I go plus nine again. Okay, but I can go plus nine on both sides of an equation, or here's the witchcraft part, I can go plus nine minus nine on the same side of the equation. And it's actually just fine because it's it, they just would cancel, right? So it's the exact same thing. I just made it look different. So now this little piece right here, oh, it's a perfect trinomial square. So that becomes x minus three quantity squared. And then this negative nine that I had to have to balance out the positive nine that I really wanted, that just gets rolled in with this four and becomes the K. So negative nine and four would make this minus uh, five. And there we are now, what I call vertex form, problems calling it standard form. And so my, um, my A in this case, when there's nothing there, that's our invisible one. Um, here, negative three, so we would put a three. If this showed as a plus three, you would put a negative three there. Careful, because the minus is already fixed, so you have to put the sign of the actual vertex um, plus, and then this would be negative five. And that's because our vertex is at three and then negative five. So we're just putting those values in both boxes. Okay, more dark arts to come on this one. Um, so we have f of x. If we were completing the square, we would not like that negative. We would multiply both sides by negative one um, to clean that sign up. Here, I'm gonna do this thing that you like, for real, you can do this? Yes, you can, watch this. I'm gonna factor a negative one out, and I'm gonna do it selectively. I'm not gonna bother to factor it out of that seven. Normally, that's a terrible idea. In this case, the only two terms I care about are the terms with the x's. This is that junk term that's going to get rolled in with k. And so what I want to do is get this to x squared, and I need this one to come with it so I can complete the square. So I'm basically just ignoring the 7. If, if you distribute, right, it's the exact same thing as I have up here. Again, I'm just giving it a different look. So then I go back to the witchcraft from the last problem. And I go uh, half of 4 is 2. 2 squared makes 4, so I'm just completing my square. And I'm going to go plus 4, minus 4. Because again, I can't just shove a 4 in there because I would like a 4. Um, I have to balance it out with that negative 4, except it's not really a negative 4. So then here comes the other really sort of funny part. Um, what I want is right here, right? That's my perfect trinomial square. That's going to factor down to my, my x minus 2 quantity squared. So I got to get this term out of here. So now I'm going to actually selectively distribute. So I'm going to just apply this negative 1 only to that negative 4, and I'm going to leave it out front the rest. And what that lets me do is get the negative 4 out of my parentheses. The negative 1 is still applied to all this. And again, it's just normally not helpful, but in this case, it's helpful. So f of x equals negative 1, x squared minus 4x plus 4. And negative 1 times negative 4 comes out of positive 4, because this one's actually the negative 4. And then, oops, don't make up a sign right there, minus 7. And then we can just finish this out as f of x 
equals, I wouldn't write the one there, I would just call it negative, um, x minus 2 quantity squared, when we factor that down, because that's now our completed square, and 4 minus 7, so that will be a minus 3. Oops, I'm supposed to give the vertex, my bad. So vertex equals 2 and negative 3. Okay, so here we go with number 8. Same idea, um, but this time there's a 2 in the way instead of a negative. And so same thing, if you think of completing a square, we would move the 11 over. And then the second step in that says if a does not equal 1, divide through by a. So we'd have to divide out this 2 to get it down to a plain x squared. So instead of dividing it out, because that would lead to a bunch of fractions, here we're just going to selectively factor again. So this is going to go 2x squared plus 6x. And I'll just write it like that for a second. And then we do our half of 6 is 3, and then 3 squared makes 9. So that's what we have to add and subtract. So f of x equals 2 and then x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9. And then I'll do my kind of selective, this is the part I want, and so I need to get that piece right there out of my way. So come on down here, and we got 2, and then that's going to be x plus 3 quantity squared, and then minus 18 and plus 11, and then finally 2x plus 3, quantity squared minus 7. So vertex is at um, negative 3 and negative 7. Okay, so this time we're asked to find the equation of a quadratic function with a vertex at 4, negative 11 and passing through this point 6, 1. So if we think about our vertex form, It's got five letters, um, H and K, so they gave us our vertex. So H, K is the 4 and the negative 11. And then X and Y, those are like our, our, right, our input and our output variables. And then we need to know A, um, which is, it's not our slope, but it kind of acts like our slope. It's our stretch, right? So kind of like when we found y equals mx plus b to get the equation in line, we needed m and b. In this one, we need the a, the h, and the k. So I was given h and k, and I got this other point, which is an xy, which would give me four of my five variables, which means I can solve for the fifth one. So the sixth one, what we're going to do is that is a point that satisfies the equation we're working on. So let's just toss that in here, and that's going to let us solve for a. So it looks like y is 1. A is our unknown, X is 6, H is 4, and then K is plus minus 11, so I'll just write it as minus 11. So let's add the 11 over to this side, and that gets us 12 makes A, and then 2 squared, so 12 equals 4A, dividing 3 equals A. And so then what's my actual answer? So that's where I have to, the same way with it, when you did the lines, we had to do y equals mx plus b and write out, you know, y equals 2x plus 7 or whatever. Um, here we'd be writing um, y or f of x, depending on what the prompt was. Um, 3 is our a, x minus 4, that was our h, quantity squared, and then minus 11. Okay, so here we're asked to find the axis of symmetry of vertex, vertex and then increasing, decreasing domain range. So kind of those same questions that we saw when we looked at functions, um, just applied to parabolas. So to determine whether the graph of the following quadratic function opens upwards or downwards. Okay, well, it's got a negative, right? So it opens down. Uh, find the vertex. Okay, we can do that. Vertex. So it's in vertex form, so that would be a negative 4, positive 5. And that's the nice thing about this form is it gives us, you know, we already know what the graph looks like. We know the orientation. Um, it gives us a lot of information. Uh, find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry always equals the shift because if, um, so if x is negative 4, 5 would be kind of like over here with our vertex. So the axis is always going to be x equals whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is, x equals h. 
So axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. And again, carefully type the equation. If it's just an empty box, it wants x equals in there or marks you wrong. We've got the opens down. And then state whether or not it's a min or a max. Well, it's opening down, so that's going to make that point a maximum. And then this one's kind of a similar question, but we're, we're given a picture instead of a, an equation. So uh, the equation of the axis of symmetry, so that would be right here. So vertical line, x equals 3. Uh, the domain of the function, interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. And then for all parabola, that's going to be the case. The range of the function looks like our low point happens at negative 4. And that would be included, and that goes up to infinity. The function has a maximum or minimum. That would be a minimum value of y equals, that's at negative 4. The function is increasing on the interval uh, interval of x values. So that reminds you that increase and decrease, you can write that as an x interval in which it's happening. So it's increasing from 3 to infinity. And then increasing, decreasing, always parentheses. Remember, because technically right there, it's not increasing or decreasing. It's zero. It'd be constant at that instant. Um, and then decreasing on the other side. So that would be from negative infinity up through three.